Hi, I'm Princess Anna Mekalbia Jumwa. I am the founder of the Breakfast Department Foundation. I just recently graduated from North Central University. I did my master's in management. Yeah, I have a distinction. Thank you. So, uh, <laughs> my academic journey with God, yeah, I would say with God because it's the author of Finishing of Our Faith, right? But I didn't just start out trusting God. He helped me. When I was young, I was doing well in school, primary school, secondary school. But um, right after my junior year, when I just had like straight A's, and then A's including French, in my senior school, I began to trade with God. I was born again already. I got sick at nine. So I began to trade with God. I began to say, okay, if you give me, if you help me top my classes term, I'll do this and this and this for you in school. I preach, I'll lead people to Christ, I'll cast the devils and all of that. So I was doing those things. But it was not like I went out intentionally seeking opportunities to do those things, right? Things were just popping up in, in the boarding house that I was just doing for God, you know, you know, healing the sick, praying for people, casting out devils and, you know, stuff like that. I was just doing them randomly because, well, why not? I had the Holy Ghost. He was telling me what to do, so I was doing it. But it was a trade by butter, right? So um, I then had to learn how not to use God after my YEC. I... I wrote my exams. I was sick during the time I had exams. So I didn't really have time to like do all the um, preparation that we that was necessary for me. So it turned out to be that I couldn't really attend my classes. So I passed my maths, and then I had to go again for um, to register again for Wayek. And then on registering for Wayek, my result was withheld. So it, it's a crazy, crazy story. When my result was withheld, I had to register a third time to write YEC a third time in another school. So at this time, it was uh, it was Penny College, you know, really. I used to get up very early to go, and then my my dad, my dad, bless his heart, um, Archbishop Dr. Peter Atuligo, he just said to me one day, like, why do you wake up so early to be in school? I'm like, well, these people used to be in SS1 when I was in SS3. I've been a head girl. I remember correcting people for being late. I don't want to be in that shoe, like, give room for people to disrespect me you know so he was he felt pity for me and i just went to school that day um three days later or one week later i can't really remember but i think a week or two later or something like that one morning i got out to go to school my dad was outside and normally he'll say go with god you know when you say that i'm leaving oh god bless you go with god so as i was just about to go after i said this go go with god i realized that my dad called me like baby actually i'm like yes dad and he says, this is the last day you're going there. I have released the results. My dad doesn't shout. He just declares. He just tells you, I've done this. And God honors his decree. So I believed him. I said, yes, amen. So I went to school that day. People used to, you know, like want to be in partnership with me when they are putting, um, pairing people up for assignments. Because somehow they just knew, oh, this girl is intelligent. They thought I just came from another school to write my YAC in SS3. You know, because sometimes people in SS1, SS2 skip school, go to another school, register in SS3, but that was my that was my third time trying to write my yek. Never, never in my life did I ever think that that would be my experience. You know, someone who's had a good academic um, uh, record all, all the years that she can remember. I remember even getting an award from Mirinda in SS1 in my school before I moved over to Evangel College. So it was kind of tough to have that experience. So, um, I got back home that day, thankfully. I think I shared more on this story in another post um, on my social media. So, I got back on that day and I found that my result was... I got a message from the school, rather, um, on the phone. It was Stockholm. And then they said, your results is, is the results have been released. And that set of results have been released. Because they have released a set earlier that mine wasn't among. So, they said, go and check. So, I got scratch cards. I went to check. And lo and behold, my results were out there. But my English was cancelled. So it wasn't an issue because in my first exam with Evangel College, I had a B2 in my English. And then this one, I was looking for a math, right? So in this math, I had a B3 and my English was cancelled. So for the rest of my life, I had to start combining um, results. So the question is, how has my faith in God, you know, affected my relationship? This is where I'm heading. Um, I had to learn. First of all, I was mad at God. I kept malice. I was... You know, not talking to him for like a week or two, 
until strangely one day i was just laying in christian thinking about how god has been a user how he had used me to lead people to christ and do all of those miraculous things and he never ever cared about me and meanwhile i did not realize that i was the person who was the user i mean when you come to god and you're trading like give me this and i'll give you that for god's sake god already gave his son to die for us and his son gave his life therefore it means that what you're living is left a substitute someone already died your death so whatever you do with your life is supposed to be what god wants you to do not what you want to do and that's bring that brings us to the place of surrender if you truly trust the lord then you should let him be in charge of your life you know let him be in charge of how things roll but we don't want to accept failure or defeat or delay even though i'm not saying that all of that can always be orchestrated by god no um, sometimes it's a process and God okays it, not because, not that he brings evil, right? He okays it because he wants to mold something inside of us. But we get mad at him and we feel like, oh, you're a user, you're messing things up. And I was so mad at God. And then he came back down and he said, look, go straight to Job chapter 40. And I was reluctant. I'm like, don't talk to me. I'm not talking to you for this. In fact, I even told our vice principal back then, Mr. Andimele, I said, look, I'm going to the university, not even though I had three years journey, you know, rather two years, so five to seven. I had like three attempts at my egg. Technically, it's before I could get to university. Again, thinking that, oh, you're smart, you, you get out of this. You know, that pride was there. And that was part of the things that the Lord, you know, worked on me during that season, leading to trusting him for, for things eventually, especially academically, because I was relying on my own strength before that season in my life. Um, I remember saying to Mr. Andimela, I said, look, I'm going to the university and I will not do no ministry. I will not preach to anybody. I will not cast no devil. I'm just going to go to school, go to church if I like, and just, I just live my life. I wasn't planning on going into the world because I didn't even know that life, right? But I was not going to have anything to do with God, thinking that there could be a middle ground. And that's the mistake most of us make. We actually think that there can be a middle ground between, you know, the world and God, not realizing that there's really no middle ground. You're either here or you are there. So I think God heard that and said, okay, I need to take this girl who's the Lord here right and so he said to me that they go to job 40 while i was laying in the cushion in our sitting room and i reluctantly went to job 40 and lo look at what god was saying to job he was asking him questions like where were you when i made this and i made that and he realized how foolish i had been you know i was kind of rubbing shoulder with the king of kings and the lord of all lords and um, thinking i i you know thinking he was the one using me when i was the one who was the user you know and i repented that day and just and just worked my heart out how that influenced my journey over time was when I got to the university, you know, the Lord didn't permit me asking questions in class like, oh, what's this thing? No, we do, no, you know, people normally do in exams are, what is number this? I was banned. I, I didn't ask questions. All through my four years, I never asked nobody. And in the end, he gave me a two-one, right? And and mind you, during these times, I was going around preaching. I was traveling out of school to preaching churches or ministry that were inviting me, especially in Anambra State. I was going all the way from Sukkot to Anambra, across many Anglican dioceses, um, Sube, um, Navy, Ogunike, you know, lots of places like that. I was going there to preach in their huge um, youth meetings, thanks to um, Prince and uh, Mommy Fama, just in case you get to watch this. Thank you for those years. So they were formative years for me, right? So I, I, I had to learn to trust God, realizing that it's good to read. I never did TDB <laughs> on my four years in school because somehow when I came to study, the Lord led me to what to study. Um, not like I was already all of it. So don't take, don't, don't, that's not something that should become a principle or any of those things. But that was really how my, my story went. Um, one thing that happened for me was that led me to trust the Lord. That led me to be humble, to know that, okay, he's the one who gives success. Even though I was desperate for a first class back then, I was so desperate. And then I didn't get it because, well, it's very proud. I don't know for any reason I didn't get it, but I just didn't get it. This time around in my master program at NTU, it was the Lord who came to me and said I was going to give you a distinction. I mean, I shared the notes um, on one of the clips in social media. I probably will share it here if you if you permit me so um i i just wrote a note one of november we left in january 2023 so in november 22 i was just praying and the lord just said i'm going to give you a distinction you're going to um the top four at ntu like when i come to school my class you know it was the ntu we didn't know about schools and departments so generally but he was referring to my class i understood with my class and then at the graduation we, uh, we got the brochure my my sister just looked in and she just says, oh my God, there are just four people with distinction in your class. And instant, I remember the word of the Lord to me in November, you're going to be among the top, 
you know, the fourth is going to be a tie, so it will be four. Otherwise, it's a top three, you know. So I just had goosebumps on my body, you know, by that. So my journey of trusting God has been a process from anger to bitterness to be mad at God and repenting of using him. Um, what I would like to say is many of us really think that we can just come and get things of God. I think that was where the Lord stripped me of that. I have been saved since nine and I was 16. So in those years between nine and 16, I thought, okay, God just gives you things. And that's what happens. When we start the relationship with God at first, he cuts us. He asks anything. He gives like a boyfriend or a man who wants to marry a girl. You know, anything you ask for that starts, you get it, right? And then in marriage, there has to be priority. So it's not like you want a Brazilian hair, you get it, you want to shoot. No, it's like, okay, do we have food first? Do we have um, heating? Do we have all the basic things in place before we can start getting all of that um, extra things? You know, so that's really what happens. God lets you come in first and then he gives you what you want, not because he's manipulative, not at all, but you're a baby at that point in time. He wants to comfort you, he wants to, you know, put things right in your heart. And then as you progress, progress progress and he sees that you're kind of depending on him for those things more than you're depending on him for him because what he really wants is a relationship so when we get to that point he starts stripping you off at any cost and you know i had to learn that he was lord i, I thought he was just savior and um that's really how this my, my faith has actually affected my academic achievements it's really been god